Welcome back to Life and Living. Are you living in the power zone? My next guest is here to tell you how you can. He is Kirk Charles, certified personal trainer, author as well, Live in the Power Zone, uh, also author of The Two Minute Office Workout and a new book that you're working on. Ah, Healthy right. Living Begins in the First Aisle. Healthy Living Begins in the First yes. Aisle. We're gonna talk all about that. Uh, give us a little brief overview. What was Live in the Power Zone? What is the premise of the book? It's basically a motivational book. I wrote that maybe, it was published about eight years ago or so, but I had written it, I was working on it for quite a long period of time. And if you're engaged in trying to achieve any goal, I believe that you're in uh, one step of an eight step process. What are those eight steps? So it all starts with a dream. Um, next would be desire, then decision making, devotion, um, determination, discipline, daring, and finally deliverance. So depending on where you are in that uh, eight-step process, the book would resonate with you because it's also sort of uh, autobiographical on my part. It tells the steps that I went through and uh, how I faced challenges and overcame challenges. So I want to I want to dig into that a bit. You're a certified personal trainer. Yes, I've seen you around Montclair. You are motivating and inspiring a lot of people That's to get in, into shape, right? <laughs> uh, be healthy and make good choices. Um, what was your dream, and are you living that dream? Right now, oh wow, I'm in the thick of it, and I'm loving it. My goal is just to inspire people, and you know I've always thought I don't know if there's really a meaning to life, but what feels good to me is to inspire people and to have them inspire me. So that's what I do with my clients. I'm trying to get them to go from point A to point B or wherever it is that they want to go, physically and mentally. And also now that I'm into the nutritional world, nutritionally. So how do we inspire each other? That's basically what I'm all about. So you said that some people inspire you while you're inspiring them. Talk about okay. a, a few examples of client interactions where you walked away just as empowered as they were. It happens all day long whenever I'm training someone because the beauty of what I do is that I meet people from all types of industries. So this morning I was talking to a gentleman who was in advertising and he's telling me all types of things that I just don't know about. Um, he is in, particularly, he is in the pharmaceutical world. So I'm listening to all types of speakers talking on that subject. He's giving me information. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm going to be sitting here with you today. Right. Maybe I can share some of that with you. So I'm always learning, always inspired because of the diversity of the clientele that I have. Yeah, one of the great things about being a personal trainer, right, all types. So I know one thing that you are, are really big on, you've talked to me about, and I know you talked to all of your clients about, is the way that we're eating. Yes. You mentioned to me that we are on this like nutrition-based diet, this, this concept, and it's mm -hmm. not a good thing. People mm -hmm. hear, why is nutri a nutrition-based diet not a good thing? It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Explain that. We, I believe, are herbivores, and we have to eat the food that's natural to us. And I think the discussions regarding nutrition confuse all of us. There are so many theories, one way and the other way. Some people believe in high protein and no carbs at all. Some people believe in high carbs and low protein. I'm more on the high carb, low protein side simply because I believe in 100% plant-based eating. I've been a vegan, which I don't like the word. I call myself a resultatarian now. A resultatarian? <laughs> a resultatarian, yes. Is this I, a new trend? Or are you starting a new thing? I started this new trend a couple of days ago. Okay. I'm into results. <laughs> so whatever gives maximum results, right. that's what we do. Yes. Do different bodies get different results? Or do you believe we're all meant to process foods the same way? We are not meant to process foods the same way. But I believe we should all be eating predominantly plant food. OK, and explain I'm, that. Explain that. Because of our anatomy, we can just start with your teeth. Your teeth are meant to grind food and not chop into it as would a carnivore would be. Um, we aren't able to digest bones. We, we don't really digest raw meat well. We have to cook the meat to start the digestion process. So depending on what part of the world you're from and what you've adapted to, then that would determine what type of plant fare would be best for you. But obviously, people all around the world eat meat. They eat all types of things. But the best ratio for you, I believe, would be 90, 95% plants and maybe 5% meat products. Okay, when we say plants, to be yes. clear, you're not just talking about vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. There are other things involved, legumes, what are those? Um, all types of green leafy vegetables, legumes, which would be seeds or nuts, um, grains, all plant fare. Chickpeas? Chickpeas would be great, yes. A lot of protein, <laughs> right? A lot of protein. Do but, you care about protein? Yes and no. I never think about how much of a nutrient I get. I don't think about how much carbs versus protein versus fat I get. I think more about ratios. So if we look at USDA recommendations regarding protein, it may say 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. I think that's overblown. I think that's overstated, um, mainly because we have a serious meat and dairy lobby. And their job is to get protein into our systems. That's what they sell. 
But I think those ratios or the amount that they tell you is wrong because it can throw the ratio off. The question is, what percentage of your calories should come from carbs versus fat versus protein? There are people who keep a, a high energy lifestyle, right? Yes. Exercising a lot. Mm -hmm. Do they need to be taking in more calories and does it matter what, where those calories come from? They certainly need to be taking in more calories because you're going to burn more, so you'll need more just for sustenance and energy. Does it matter where they come from? I believe that it does. I believe that we are carbohydrate animals. We need carbohydrates. So personally, when I'm working out and it's a heavy workout, let's say I were to go run five miles right now, I might eat a couple of bananas or oranges prior to going out running. I don't believe in necessarily doing uh, using or taking uh, protein shakes or anything like that because again it throws your ratio off so I suggest if it's a serious workout if I had to run a half marathon right now I eat a lot of bananas I'd probably put some salt in my body for electrolytes and so peanut butter on those bananas that's my go-to no <laughs> don't tell me no peanuts normally I, I, <laughs> I just had a client talk about peanut butter this morning I don't do peanut butter I don't recommend it but there are times when I go to Whole Foods and I'll get some almond butter I will admit that do not take peanut butter out I of my life no, don't do it no, nothing is off the table <laughs> you can have whatever you want but some products Processed food is really just junk food. I don't think it's junk food at all. That has to be at a bare minimum. Right. Meat products, that should be at a minimum. And the vegetable world is yours. I love it. You are a resultitarian? A resultitarian. Resultitarian. Results. results are working for you? Yes. I and love they, it. They're working for you, too. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not doing exactly what you're doing, but I'm trying. I'm, I'm starting. So the two-minute office workout, another yes. book that you wrote. Yes. Quick tips for how we can stay fit even when we're sitting at a desk all day, which when I'm not in the studio is what I'm doing. Some people refuse to exercise, so I have to make it easy for them. I'm like, you work in an office all day long. Just take two minutes off every hour and do an exercise. And I have videos on this. Um, squats. It would be impossible for 99% of people to squat for two minutes. So you don't even need that amount of time. But I suggest two minutes to do the squats and maybe stretch out. Same squat, do the same movement for two minutes straight, or you want us to switch it up and, and mix it up? Depending on your capacity and what you can do, two minutes straight would be great. I suggest just one exercise for that two-minute period and take a break and maybe a stretch. So exercise, stretch. But if you do that, it's two minutes during an eight-hour day, that's 16 minutes of exercise. You will build a lot of strength. If every hour you took two minutes off and you did 10, 15, 20 squats, I'm telling you, you would be a lot stronger. I love it. I do this at home because I'm a mom. I have two kids. My time to work out is often very limited. So I put the kids down, I do a couple workouts, I go do some things, and I come back and do it again. When, you know, in my off hours when I'm not working. There's always a way. <laughs> There's always a way. There's there is. Way, is yes. that what you believe? There's always a way. There's always a way. And my job is to help my clients find that way. So if they, they're unable to do something, it's my fault because I should, I should make them be able to do it. Well, you said you love to motivate and inspire. You motivated and inspired us. Kirk Charles. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Autism is one of the fastest growing developmental disorders in the U.S. Here in New Jersey, one in every 41 children is diagnosed with autism. And when a child is diagnosed with autism, every member of the family is affected. While there currently is no cure for autism, early detection and intervention can offer critical improvements for the child and tremendous benefits for the family. To learn more about autism, contact the Binder Autism Center at St. Joseph's Children's Hospital. Also brought to you by Choose New Jersey and by the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor.